how do you perform jihad? That's a big question. Everybody's heard the word jihad, right? Holy war. Is jihad an inner struggle? We've heard all of these, these talks. Or an outer struggle. There's four ways to perform jihad. By the hand, by the mouth, by the sword, and by the heart. And every Muslim must perform jihad. If there was a war that was declared, matter of fact, when Muhammad, my, my former husband, he is now an American citizen, got his citizenship, I asked him walking out of the courtroom, I said, if there was a war that broke out in the United States between our country and Syria, who would you fight for now that you're an American citizen? He said, Syria. I said, on American soil? He said, absolutely. Because you see, their allegiance is not even, no matter, <laughs> doesn't even get recognized. Matter of fact, on the Syrian website, uh, on the um, embassy, second page in, it says on there, because Muhammad had at one point owed me quite a bit of money for child support, for child support. And if you owe over $5,000 in child support, you're not allowed to leave the country, right? Okay, hmm. Well, he was going back and forth to Syria all he wanted. I finally call, I call immigration. I'm calling all these different people. How is he leaving the country? This is what they told me. If you are an American citizen and you do not want to stay in America, you can leave this country without any passports. It's the responsibility of the country that you're entering to give you the visa. Now, on the Syrian website, uh, embassy website, it says that if you were born in Syria and you have another citizenship, it doesn't matter. You don't have to have papers, basically. I'm paraphrasing it. You can go and read it yourself. Let's take a page in. It says, you and your wives, plural, and children can enter. They will issue you a visa at the door. Now, I asked them, the immigration, I said, okay, how does he, how is he going? I understand how he's getting to Syria. He has two passports, too, an American passport and a Syrian passport. And he has, I don't know how many different names. We've already told you about the seven social security numbers. All right. So I said, how does he get back into this country? All you have to do is prove you're an American citizen with a driver's license. They pull you up. You're back in. That's how they're doing it. See, the thing is, is that. The law protects the criminal, really. It doesn't protect us. So I have seen so much in the past 12 years how people go, well, why don't you just file? Why don't you just do this? You? I did. It didn't work. Nobody heard me. Nobody cared. Because the, the laws are so bent already now. Did that answer your question? Kind of? Okay. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Okay, with your experience with Judaism and Muslim and Christianity, you know, mm -hmm. how do you, do you support prayers in public school led by a teacher or think people should pray individually? Oh, that's a real hard question to ask. I, I could give you my opinion, you know. Y yeah. I don't believe in teachers led prayers, you know, because if I was a Jewish religion, yes. much religion, I don't like being expected to say a prayer that I don't agree with. Well, I can, I can tell you this, growing up as an American citizen, I have seen the decline of our country when they took the prayer out of school. Um, I remember the only thing we used to get detention for was chewing gum. <laughs> now, we get, now they have detentions for kids carrying guns. Okay, so there's, so when you're talking about how I feel about if they pray or, or don't pray, I think prayer, to me, personally, is very important. Would I appreciate anybody forcing anything on my children other than what my beliefs are? No, I wouldn't appreciate that. As a matter of fact, that Islam is being forced in a lot of public schools. Matter of fact, I did a paper for California back in 2000, 98 pages against Houghton Mifflin because they were making seventh graders take on Islamic names and become a Muslim, pretend Muslims for two weeks. I didn't appreciate that. So no, I don't believe anything should be forced on anybody, but I believe that if a student wants to get up and pray, it's their right. 
because it still is, I hope, a free country. You mentioned that um, children are abducted. Are they abducted by, for any reason other than, uh, and taken to Muslim, pardon? Are they, are they abducted uh, for any reason other than by a parent? Um, this one woman that I'm working with right now, the father actually died, and it's the brother of the children, uh, of the father that's passed away, and sister that's have abducted these children. You see, you've got to understand that to a Muslim, first of all, they really don't care the first few years of a child's life uh, what they are. Um, there's actually kind of a, a tradition that from age zero to seven, you are to play with your children, be their friend. From seven to 14, you are to break your children, completely break their spirit. From 14 to 21, you rebuild them. After 21, you become their friend again. Now, it's mandatory in Islam, not just a tradition, but if you've studied the Quran and the Hadith, it's mandatory that a child pray at age of puberty, and especially at 10 is when they have to start. So to a Muslim, for instance, in my situation, to my, my former husband, even though he's basically not what you would call a good Muslim. And when I mean by the term good, that's a very broad term, isn't it? What's good? By whose standards? Okay. But he doesn't pray five times a day. He does fast Ramadan, which is really kind of cool because you can make up the whole year in one month and as far as Islam goes. But, but um, um, I'll, if anybody has a question on that, I'll tell you later. But, but if, according to Islam, if our children do not follow Islam, According to Islam, he is not only punished in hell, afterlife, he's punished here on this earth too. Plus, his whole family will turn against him. And he can also be killed because he has not raised his family, his children properly. That help kind of answer your question? So why are they abducting him? Because it's very important that they are raised in the Islamic, the Sharia law, under an Islamic country, that, that the girls marry a Muslim guy and that the boys participate in Islam. I, have, I understand that um, in many Muslim countries, what happened to Aisha uh, is very common. It's not, not uh, rare at all. No, there is no age limit in Islam for marriage. A 70-year-old man can marry a baby. Okay, there's no age limit. Um, in my book, Married to Muhammad, it is pretty graphic, some of the things that I put in there, because Islam is a very graphic religion. Um, there was a case that I was called on about. A nurse called me. Uh, I'm just, can I be frank here? Sure. Okay, let's talk right. about, let's talk truth here. We don't have too many young children in here. Um, in Islam, if a woman does not have relationships with her husband when he wants it, and usually every day is mandatory, he does not have to pay for her food or clothes or anything for that day. All right? Now, there was a case where this woman was in the hospital totally unconscious. The husband comes in and has a relationship with his wife, who is totally unconscious. The nurse walks in and sees this and catches him. He goes, do you want the hospital bill paid? Sick, huh? And how can they, how can they tolerate these kind of abominations? I don't understand that. The women? Yes, not just the women, but anybody. Well, I know in my in my case, I put up with a lot of stuff. I a fifteen year marriage because I had nowhere to go. 
That's why we need these shelters. You know, it, it's wonderful to see these women wanting to be set free, Muslim, non-Muslim, whatever. But if you're not, they need places to go and they need people willing, we have a couple here, to risk their life for these women. Plus, they don't know, most of them who are raised in Islamic countries, they don't know anything else. And if you don't know, if you've never tasted vanilla, how do you know vanilla is good if you've only eaten chocolate all your life? If you're raised in an abusive home, that's, that's what, what you, you know. Exactly. Exactly. Matter of fact, I'm not really a yeller and a screamer until I married Muhammad. Because my children only understood, I could only get their attention sometimes by yelling and screaming. Because that's what they're used to. Which now we're trying to break that cycle, but it's been very, very difficult. Very difficult. Thank you very much for sharing with us. I have two questions for you. Tonight you used the term Muslim country a number of times. Uh, this past week we were participants in a, um, what they call it, stealth jihad program over at Rollins College, and there was an imam there. Yes. And he made a very big point of, of stating that there are no such things as no Islamic countries, that they're just <laughs> countries that... Muslims live in. I mean, how would you respond to, to that statement? I would ask him, are, is every person in the world a Muslim? Yes. According to Islam, everybody born is a Muslim. The only reason why you're not practicing Islam, because of your parents didn't bring you up the right way, so it's your parents' fault. Mm -hmm. Every prophet in the Bible, even Jesus, was a Muslim. Islam even teaches that Jesus will come back and he will lead the world in the Islamic prayer and, and get married, have children, and be buried next to Muhammad. Now, <laughs> does that answer your question? They don't just see these countries as Islam, Islamic nations. They see already, their vision has already spread way beyond that. And I don't know if you can pull that slide up or not. I don't know if I've got it up here or not. They see the whole globe as Islam. You see, when you see a mosque, this, I'm trying to give you their, their mindset. They don't see the world with a mosque on top. They see a mosque with the world inside. Do you understand where I'm coming from? A, a different look. Ba back to the boxes. Unfortunately, us as professing Christians, and I don't know how many are here or not, Islam has it right where I said the box, where they have the box, and they have the word Islam on top, and inside the box they have their life. You see, this is where we as Christians are missing it, because unfortunately we have our box, and on top of our box, we have the word life. And inside the box, we have our religion or our belief. We're not going to change the world until we have a box that our faith is so important, it's insignificant to our life. And that's why people are coming to Islam, because they're seeing that dedication. Again, the five prayers a day. It looks so pretty on the outside. But once you get deep, that's where you start seeing the abuse in the real depths of what it's all about. Did that answer your question? Okay, secondly, we see more and more uh, these situations where young girls are promised in marriage uh, by their families and then refuse to go through with it and they're stoned to death. Yes. Is, is, is that a, a, a tradition that's just country to country, or is that Islam it's as a not, whole? It's not Islam, okay? It's, it's really not Islam. There's nowhere that you can find that in the Quran or the Hadith. That is more of a tradition, the prearranged marriages. 